Hello everyone. Processing of signals via digital systems have the advantages that they are programmable, flexible and precise as compared to their analog counterparts. For continuous time signals to be processed through digital systems, there is a need of converting them to a discrete time signal. Thereafter, once they are processed, they are reconstructed, that is they are converted back to the continuous time domain. The process of converting a continuous time signal into a discrete time signal by taking few samples of the continuous time signal is called sampling. Taking too many samples of a signal results in exact reconstruction of the original signal but that is wastage of memory and other resources. If we take 8 samples in one cycle of this cosine signal as shown by the red dots and reconstruct the original signal by joining these dots we observe perfect recovery of the signal. As there are 8 samples per cycle, the sampling rate fs is 8 times of f that is the frequency of the signal and the sampling interval t is 1 8th of t0 the fundamental time period. When the sampling rate is low, say 4 samples in 5 cycles, it results in a sinusoid that has a lower frequency and the higher frequency information is lost. The 10 Hz signal is recovered as a 2 Hz signal. This is known as aliasing. Sampling at a rate of 2 samples per cycle may work for a cosine signal but may not work for a sine signal as it results in a flat signal with just no information. Sampling theorem given by Nyquist tells us the sampling rate that should be considered so that the reconstruction of this original signal is perfect. Let's start with a pan-limited signal and from its Fourier transform it can be observed that the maximum frequency present in the signal is omega m radians per second and there are no frequency components greater than omega m. Moreover, it is a low pass in signal in nature and if we talk about its bandwidth uh, then we know that bandwidth is given by the highest frequency component minus the lowest frequency component and in this case the bandwidth of the signal is omega m minus 0 that is equal to omega m. To sample the signal xt at a rate of fs hertz or omega s radians per second it is multiplied by an impulse train which is a periodic function with periodicity t seconds where t is 1 over f or uh, equi that is equivalent to omega s that is the sampling frequency in radians over 2 pi. Initially all the impulses in the train had the same strength but now this action of multiplying them with signal xt modifies the strength of the impulses. The strength of the impulse located at any time instant is the value of the signal at that time instant. Representation of all these signals in the frequency domain gives a better visu visualization and hence understanding of the sampling theorem. Let's map these signals in the frequency domain by taking their Fourier transforms. The Fourier transform of an impulse train is also an impulse train uh, which is also periodic. Uh, with the periodicity omega s that is equivalent to 2 pi over t. So if t decreases, omega s increases. That means as the distance between impulses decrease in the time domain, the distance between impulses increase in the frequency domain. The sample signal xst was obtained by multiplying the signals xt and the impulse strain delta t in the time domain. The spectra of XST can thus be obtained by convolving their respective spectra in the frequency domain. The convolution of an impulse with any function results in the same function but its location shifts to the location of the impulse. Thus when the yellow impulse convolves with X omega, the resulting spectra is centered at XR0 and when the red impulse convolves with x omega, it results in the spectra that is centered at omega s and so on. So taking samples at t intervals in the time domain has resulted in multiple copies of the spectra of this signal that are centered at n times of omega s where n can take integer values. If in the time domain we keep on reducing the space between the impulses in the impulse train, the spacing between impulses in the frequency domain increases. As discussed, each of these impulses convolve with the spectra x omega. 
therefore the spacing between the spectra also increase with decrease in the sampling duration or to say with increase in the sampling rate this can be seen in the next slide in the time domain the same signal is sampled at three different rates the sampling rate increases as we go from top to bottom for the middle case impulses are located such that all spectra are placed adjacent to each other with zero spacing between them all of these spectra are mere replica of each other and each of them contain the same information keeping any one of them can solve our purpose but remember ours was a low pass signal centered at zero the yellow one this yellow spectra can be filtered out by passing the entire spectrum through an ideal low pass filter with a cutoff frequency of omega m the highest frequency component present in the signal the original spectra and thus the original signal can be recovered in this case the sampling frequency omega s in this case is twice that of omega m from this figure it seems that if we have an ideal low pass filter it is possible to reconstruct the original signal from its samples this is the minimum sampling rate required and is termed as the nyquist sampling rate so the nyquist rate of sampling is omega s and that is equal to twice that of omega m when represented in hertz it is fs should be equal to twice of fm hertz the nyquist frequency is the maximum frequency component that can be reconstructed without aliasing which is omega m or fm here nyquist interval t is the reciprocal of sampling rate fs so t is equivalent to 1 over fs and that is equivalent to 1 over twice of fm designing an ideal filter with such a sharp cut off is not possible practically and thus ideal filters are not realizable practical filters can be used to recover the signal provided there should be some gap between the spectra from this figure it can be observed that omega s is greater than twice of omega m and this is known as oversampling the sampling interval t is less than 1 over twice of fm when sampling rate is low their spectra overlap and it is not possible to recover the original spectra from the overlapped spectra this is the result of sampling at a lower rate than required and is termed as undersampling the sampling frequency in this case is omega s and that is less than twice of omega m the sampling duration here is greater than 1 over twice of fm let's sum up that things sampling theorem states that any signal band limited to omega m radians per second or fm hertz it can be recovered exactly from its samples if the sampling frequency is greater than twice the maximum frequency component present in the signal for a low pass signal since the bandwidth is also equal to omega m this theorem states that the sampling frequency should be greater than twice the bandwidth of the signal three popular terms associated with sampling theorem are the nyquist rate the nyquist frequency and the nyquist interval nyquist rate is the minimum sampling frequency and that is equal to twice that of omega m the maximum frequency the nyquist frequency is the maximum frequency that can be reconstructed without aliasing and it is omega m here nyquist interval is the sampling interval t and is a reciprocal of the sampling frequency in hertz there are many practical applications where samples are taken as per sampling theorem the speech signals in telephone communication are in the range of 300 hertz to 3400 hertz since the highest frequency component is 3400 hertz the minimum sampling rate should be twice uh, twice of 3400 hertz and that is 6.8 kilohertz practically the sampling rate is kept a bit higher and it is 8 kilohertz similarly for music signals having the highest frequency component as 20 kilohertz the nyquist rate is 40 kilohertz but the sampling rate practically used is 44.1 kilohertz so we observe that almost in all practical applications the sampling rate is always kept higher than the nyquist rate let's conclude this video with an example given a signal xt let us find out its nyquist rate that is the minimum sampling rate 
the Nyquist frequency and the Nyquist interval. In this problem, there are three components in the signal. The first one is the constant term and it can be seen as a DC component with zero frequency. Let's call this frequency as omega 1. The second component has a frequency of omega 2 as 9 pi radians per second or that is equivalent to 4.5 hertz. The third component is the frequency omega 3 is equal to 6 pi radians per second or the F3 is equal to 3 hertz. So the maximum frequency present in the signal is the frequency of the second term that is F2. To compute the Nyquist rate, we know that Nyquist rate or the minimum sampling rate Fs is given as twice that of the maximum frequency component. So here Nyquist rate is 2 times of 4.5 hertz that is equivalent to 9 hertz. Now the Nyquist frequency is the maximum frequency that can be recovered without aliasing and here it is the maximum frequency component that is 4.5 hertz. Nyquist interval T is given as the reciprocal of the sampling frequency 1 over Fs that is equivalent to 1 over 9 seconds which is equal to 0 0.11 seconds. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.